My name is Cody. Welcome to today's YouTube video on Madden 19 or Madden 20, and we're going to be talking a little bit about some channel changes, some Madden 20 stuff for you. So hopefully you enjoy the video. If you're new to the channel, um, this is a great video for you to watch because basically what I do in Madden is I try to help you get better as I get better. And so just just kind of helps keep me accountable, helps keep me getting better, and hopefully you can find some things that will help you as well. The offense I'm running in this video is the Arizona Cardinals offensive playbook. The defense I'm running is the Green Bay Packers defensive playbook. I've got some breakdowns on my YouTube channel. You can head over there and check those out just by clicking my name at the bottom of the screen. But first and foremost, I'm going to get my subs in. And this spread set is my favorite formation in the game it's the formation that i will spend the majority of the time on offense and i have broken down this entire playbook and detail and will continue to do so as we get closer to madden 21 now as we jump into this i want to talk about my youtube channel i want to talk about kind of what i see us doing and and hopefully it's valuable to you hopefully it will help you um kind of know what to expect from me um going forward as we start off with a really really bad animation and a pick right off the bat so my youtube channel the, the whole reason i started the youtube channel honestly was to get better at madden 20 it really wasn't to help anybody get better back or, and it wasn't madden 20 actually it was madden 12 uh when i started posting videos um consistently madden 13 was really the madden that i felt like was the madden year that i kind of got a little bit more uh above average i would say i'd say i'd still um definitely would say that i was still you know not at the level um you know, of a pro player or anything by any, any stretch of the imagination, but um, really took my game to a, to a whole nother level. And from there, I kind of fell off. I got busy, life happened. Madden 25, I had one last really good run. And then, um, and then after that, my YouTube channel kind of slowly died off as kind of life happened and things got busier. And now, uh, and I, but I did not stop playing Madden, and that's that's kind of what I wanted to kind of jump into here today. I never stopped playing Madden. My hunger to get better never stopped, and I kept um, I kept trying to develop. But because of my schedule and because of the way my life was going, I had to learn how to get really good in a really short amount of time. Um, I wasn't able to put in the hours that I was putting in. Uh, as a college student or a young adult. And so I had to just kind of adjust, had to adopt, overcome, improvise. I had to just learn different strategies. And I think that actually will help me in this coming Madden season. Because one of the really, one of the things that I will, I really, really like, there's a saying that I that uh, military training has and that is essentially or not a saying but just kind of a mantra that they live by but people that are physically fit because they're a personal trainer um, think about how they have the luxury of being able to do that full time I mean they can you know work out as much as they possibly want to they can always control their diet they can do all of those things in the military though when you're on a mission you don't really have that amount of time to work out. And so you have to learn how to stay in shape, stay physically fit in a short amount of time. And that's kind of how I'm going to approach Madden in the coming Madden 21 season. And what I hope will be helpful from my YouTube channel to your you, to, uh, to you guys and your gameplay. And just helping you be more effective and learn the game. And so I want to talk a little bit about how we can go about doing that in Madden 20 as we prepare for Madden 21. The first thing that I've learned that has helped me is, again, my YouTube channel is just as much for me as it is for you. Me doing these videos helps me get better because it helps me when you are teaching something or when you're trying to communicate something, you have to be able to execute that at a high level. If you don't, if you're not able to actually execute it, then odds are you're not going to be able to communicate uh, as much as you'd like to. And there I thought I slid and I didn't. I'm off to a really bad start here. But you, you're not able to communicate it as much as you as much as you want to be able to. 
The other thing that you get from teaching is repetition. Because you're constantly engaging with the material, you're constantly working to get better with it, you're going to be able to understand it at a higher level. And so for me, that's kind of my approach in Madden 20 uh, for the rest of the year and for Madden 21. I want to get better as a Madden player, and so that's why I'm going to do my YouTube channel. And I think that as I'm getting better, as I'm improving, as I'm showing you guys what I'm learning you're going to get better as well. I think just by naturally, um, that's kind of how it's going to work. And so hopefully you guys are on board with that. And if you are, if you haven't yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button because I think that we're going to get uh, a lot a lot done in Madden 21. Um, I think I'm kind of just at a different place as a Madden player. Um, these are, it's kind of what life does. You get older and you have to be able to do things much, 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 much more efficiently because you don't have the luxury of having a bunch of time. You know, I mean, we all know about the Madden players that, um, you know, have have the luxury of a full-time schedule to be able to play, but then we also really respect the ones that don't. And and be quite honest with you, I am the one of the ones that don't. So a couple things that I've learned that's helped me be effective even, even when... I don't have the luxury of a full-time schedule to be able to practice everything and learn everything about the game. The first is keep it simple. Keep it simple. That is kind of the basic starting point for everything that I do with my YouTube channel and with my Madden channel and with all of those things um, because it's really, really hard to execute a complex plan. In the 1960s, um, when Tom Landry was the coach of the Dallas Cowboys and Vince Lombardi was the coach of the Green Bay Packers, they were both um, they were both coming from a really really good New York Giants football team, and Tom Landry was kind of a defensive guy and Vince Lombardi was more of an offensive guy, and what happened was. Landry had developed this really good 4-3 flex defense, but he didn't want to use Vince Lombardi's offense when he became the coach of the Dallas Cowboys. And so what he did was he developed this kind of new scheme, and what it really was was a very multifaceted, multi-purpose scheme. And it looked great on paper, but if people would be honest and, and, and really evaluate... Now, again, he still got to the NFC Championship, but part of the reason that I believe that Tom Landry did not have as much success as Vince Lombardi did in those years was due to the fact that Lombardi's offense, if you actually go back and watch the games, was a very simple formula. Run the Packer sweep until they key on it, and then once they key on the Packer sweep, then we're going to go to our play action game and some of our other plays, not just our play action game, but also the trap, um, inside runs, different things off of that. Essentially what it was, was we're going to have a power play and then we're going to have a counter play, a power play, something that's going to make the defense have to over pursue something. We're going to be able to execute consistently on them. And then a uh, counter play, something that looks exactly the same as our power play, but it goes, it takes advantage of the defense over pursuing to stop the original play that we have been running. And so in Madden, you can do that in a lot of different ways. Um, you can do that through the air. You can do that through the ground. You can do that in trips. You can do that in spread. It really doesn't matter the formation. Uh, it's really just a simple philosophical approach. And it's all, again, it's all about having a power play and then having a counter play. And I really take that approach to offense. Tom Landry, on the other hand, multifaceted office, offense, different blocking schemes for every single different look different strategies, very adjustable, very flexible offense. And again, something that really worked when the offense had um, had time. But what ended up happening, I really believe, is it became an adjustment battle. And it, it's hard to win those. That's why you'll hear good Madden players, players that are really, really effective at Madden. One of the, one of the things that you'll hear them say a lot when they're trying to teach what they do is you want to have you want to have everything look identical. Defensively, you want everything to look exactly the same. Now the game's changed a little bit this year because you have to you have to kind of have a defense for pro sets, and then you got to have one for you know these bunch wide three wide receiver sets. 
But in general, what it boils down to is you want to try to have your looks as much as you can have them look identical. What happens when you're able to do this at a high level is the offense cannot identify what defense you're in. If you're in a cover four, cover three, if you're blitzing, if you're in max coverage, here I'm blitzing three off the left edge, so I'm going to try to basically have a, set, a left edge pressure, but they, they can't identify where your players are going to go after the snap of the ball. However, if your, form, if your pre-snap looks different every time, then they can kind of know based off of where your players are, what your tendency is going to be to do. So in Madden, keep it simple, right? That doesn't only apply to people who don't have a ton of time to be able to devote to learning the game, learning the ins and outs and everything that it comes with being a Madden player. It also applies to scheme fundamental systematic equations because if your scheme, if your offense is is um, if your offense is simple and it looks the same and if your defense is simple and it looks the same then what's going to happen is all of a sudden you have the opportunity to be much 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 more effective and there's a second time I've blown a user play but all that to say when you have a limited amount of time to be able to learn Madden teach Madden you have to have a very simple playbook and so you have to be able to diagnose defenses diagnose things in ruthless simplicity and that's what I try to do I try to keep everything that I do in Madden I try to keep it very very simple very very quick very easy to adjust because again the simpler your blitz setups the simpler your formation shifts the simpler all of those things Madden is a game of speed and adjustments can you adjust to what your opponent is doing can you can you stand up you know can you bend but don't break and that's kind of bracketed in two basic philosophies that i have when it comes to the offensive side of the ball um or when it comes to the the overarching picture of the game and that is on defense my entire philosophy is to essentially not give up touchdowns, as I do right there, but to give up field goals. That's my goal. Um, this guy has done a really good job of shredding me with that five-wide package. And so I've got to adjust to that a little bit. But that's kind of my general philosophy. And the games that I win, when I look back and say, what did I do and why did I win those games? It's almost always because of my ability to bend but don't break on defense, to give up field goals and not touchdowns. Here, I'm in a big hole, and I think I really believe that part of the, the biggest reason, obviously that fumble was huge, but the two drives that he's been able to make and go down and score seven have been critical, 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 critical. On offense, it's kind of the reverse. I want to have a simple offense, and in general, I want to have my offense be very effective in the red zone. If my offense can score seven instead of instead of always scoring um, three, I have a feeling, and I just have come to really believe that over the long haul, I'm going to win more games than I lose because my offense is going to consistently going up and down the field scoring seven. Now again, that's much much easier said than it is done. But what it really comes down to, and I really believe this, is having a very very effective offense inside the 20 yard line on both sides. And I would even go farther enough to say inside the five to 10 yard line. Um, how effective is your offense? I'll oh, just scramble here. But how, how effective is your offense inside those thresholds? My offense, I've worked really, really hard on it. I think it's a lot better. This year has been a little bit harder for me because I really like the pass-based Arizona playbook. But inside the 5, inside the 10, the ability to be able to score touchdowns instead of be stymied to field goals is absolutely, 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 I believe, paramount to my success this year if there's even been any but my ability to win games and i would say it's the same for you 
if you look at all the games that you've won and lost, typically you lose a game because of two things. Number one, turnovers, and number th- number two, red zone capitalization. Are you able to capitalize when you get the ball in the red zone? Right now, I've had two significant turnovers in the first half, two significant turnovers, one went back that have both resulted in short fields for him. He's really only driven up on me one time. But again, I have not been consistent offensively yet as this drive, finally able to get in the end zone, get seven, get back to being very, very consistent. Now, when I go back on defense, I've got to make an adjustment because if I if I allow another touchdown going into half, I believe he gets the ball. So really what I'm trying to do is trying to get a quick turnover, trying to take advantage of some of the things that he's been showing me. But again, all that comes with a simple, simple approach because when your blitz setups are simple, when your formation shifts are simple, when everything looks the same, it's a lot easier to be able to adjust on the back end because you're not shifting and changing and you know doing all of those things. You're simply adjusting to what the offense throws your way right simple 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 and what most people try to what most people do and i am so 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 guilty of this um one of my biggest weaknesses on in madden this year and really every year i think is i i don't keep that strategy i deviate from that strategy more than i would want to tell you because i get blitz happy I get stuck in my ways, I get whatever, and I stop thinking about the fact that the the offense has their own battle. I'm not battling, when I'm on defense, I'm not battling the one play that they're going to run over and over again. What most people on defense try to do is they try to stop every single route that someone has. They literally come on defense and they say, okay, I've got to defend the corner route. Okay, I've got to defend the in route. Okay, I've got to defend the post route. When I watch people like Problem Right play, when I watch people like Joke play, when I when I watch really successful Madden players play, and primarily I learned this from Problem Right, it's okay. It's okay to give up stuff. You're never going to not. You're never going to be in a situation where you're going to be able to just flat out box your opponent. And if you are, they're not any good. It's that simple. So, you know, that's only that strategy is only going to work for the people that that strategy is only going to work for specific people. It's not going to work for the best of the best. For the best of the best, you have to take these big, big, big principles like being willing to give up certain routes at certain times. Now, Across all of Madden history that I've seen, the cover two has been probably most the most consistent defense. Let's see if I can get him here. The most consistent defense has been the cover two defense with the deep blue from the middle linebacker. It's been the most consistent defense I've ever seen across every season of Madden. Almost always you see that because those cloud flats, especially if they start deep, they're going to take away a lot of the outbreaking patterns. It's going to force your opponent to play in the middle of the field where then you as the user can kind of have some control over what happens and the reason i say that and the reason i bring all of this up to you right now is because if you've watched this game hopefully what you're seeing is the ability to adjust the ability to move and flex here he goes blitzes his whole team i'm able to catch him in a bump and run situation once again tyree kill able to tie the game up and honestly Depending on how he goes, we're still kind of in that similar situation. I might be able to get up by a possession if he makes a mistake. It's all on him as a uh, as a thing. But what I'm trying to get you to see is on defense, and this is why defense is so 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 much fun for me. Defense is a mental game. The whole game of Madden is a mental game, but really, really defense is specifically, especially in this year's game, um, because it's so difficult to stop the run, because it's so difficult to stop certain passing concepts, because I think in general, you know, Madden, typically what will happen is they'll start out a really high powered offense and then the defense will adjust to it. Defense is the mental game, the ability to kind of take specific things away at specific times, working on the again, against the mental thing of the opponent, and it all comes down to, do you have a good user? Do you have a good user? So like right now, I've got him kind of in a really difficult difficult deal because he's going to go to his verticals again, and I think I might be able to get him one more time. 
I think we just were able to swat that. But again, it's all about the mental side of it. He's running verticals, 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 verticals. Now, my job is to simply try to take some, again, take away certain things, right? Take away certain things. If you don't hear me say anything else today, I hope you hear me say your job as the user is to take away certain things certain things here i'm able to get him one more time with that and let me see if i can get a block and maybe get a field goal ah i might have been able to cut that back outside i got one play here now again you know depending and this is where the momentum is starting to shift i hope we can see that but so here he's going to go press coverage one more time let's see if we can catch him if we can't we've got to have a backup plan and so what i'm going to do is put kelsey on a drag Put Watkins on a comeback route. Hopefully Hill's open. This is kind of a one-man read, honestly. But we've got some other things in the hopper in case things go down, go bad here. But we'll see what he does. But trying to get Tyreek one more time. And he goes with him. So we're just going to check down. And we should be able to get a field goal. So pretty good defense there by him. Kind of recognizing what we were trying to do. Hopefully we make this. Nice. Good way to finish the first half after starting really poorly. But you see the mental chess match that defense is. And this is why, too, one of the really things that I one of the other things that you see a lot in really good Madden players is the ability to not ever quit. The ability to on to the next play, on to the next play, on to the next play. That is something that takes a lot of time. Um not really even a lot of time. It just takes a mental focus, the ability to not get frustrated, even when it gets frustrating. There's been games I've lost that I should have won, right? And we probably all have that story. You're not going to win every game of Madden. I've never had that happen. But what's going to happen is, can you be consistent over time? Can you be consistent over time? consistency and that comes from using the middle linebacker very very simple one thing you can do today to start getting better always use the middle linebacker In my opinion it's the most effective um most effective guy to user because of, of how powerful uh cover two man is right so just use the middle linebacker and cover two man and try to try to jump routes that is something that will take you very very far and again simple defenses this year, and this year more than ever, I think we're seeing it because of the, just the fact that there's not blitzing is not as big of a deal as it's been in the past. But, but, um, and formation variation, you know, pretty much it's at least for me, it's there's about three to five formations in this year's game that is really effective on defense, and the rest of them are kind of just not really that effective. And so, I want to come back to that in just a moment, but because of that. Um, reality, you're able to, you know, kind of adjust a little bit, kind of focus in, but it all comes back to, you can only run so many different variations of cover two. You can only run so many different variations of cover three, cover four, and you're see here, this guy kind of going with this gun ace strategy. So see if we can't get him here. He breaks another one. And so if he's consistent with that, we'll have to do a couple of little things here to be able to take that away. But all that to say, the Green Bay Packers playbook has the big three. The dime 146 for pressure, the nickel 335 wide for heavy, heavy running attacks, and the 3-4 bear for base run D. Right, that's what this has. That's what this package has. Now, what you can do because this guy's kind of being a little bit of a weirdo, um, coming out in this gun ace. I'm gonna just check down to a simple three four bear, and you'll see just standard three four bear, um, just because of the box is gonna be able to kind of hang with it. Again, what I would say to you. And then he's going to run the C routes. He's going right. That's actually a really good route. Got the C routes there. But you can also come out in these nickel uh, 245 odd. And 
Uh, there's slants. Oh, it's bad stick. But anyway, basically forcing him to get out of his standard routine of passing every or running the ball every time he sees that that dime. There he goes again, and he just can't. I mean, it's just difficult to run against the 3-4 bear. And now he's going to go to some kind of 5-wide ace package. We'll just see if our little max coverage does much for us. Not able to get us into a fourth down. Now, the one thing I did want to come back to is the idea that there's only so many variations of the same play. There's left edge pressure, there's right edge pressure, there's double edge pressure, and there's a gap pressure. That's that's, I think, four different forms of basic pressure that you could bring at your opponent. Meaning, you can blitz someone through the a gap, you can blitz someone off the right edge. Or you could blitz someone off the left edge. Now, you can also get some B-gap pressures. But in general, those are the three ones. And then the other big one is, can you get a double-edge pressure if they block a running back or a tight end or whatever? So because those are the three big, four big ways that you're going to be able to send pressure, the pressure have a formation that is able to do those three to four things. And that's kind of your standard pass defense package, right, when they're going to come out and pass the ball. And then the trick is, oh, I don't know how he didn't catch that. I've thrown that so many times. Um, the trick is being able to adjust off of the pressure. As you saw from the verticals, he's running a lot of verticals in the first couple um, sequences. And then he, you know, I kind of adapted to it, got a few interceptions, completely changed the nature of the game. Right? Again, there's only so many. For example, with passing the ball, you can run a crossing route, right? So why cross? You can run a post route. You can run a four verticals. You can run another crossing route left to right. You know, there's only so many types of things that you can do. So you want to keep it simple, right? You want to keep the offense simple enough that you can actually execute it. Here, Mahomes is going to make some magic happen. I think we might be able to get in for six. But you want to be able to have it simplified so that you can execute it. That's why with the passing offense, you want to have a good post route, a good corner route, a good crossing route, a good streak route, and that's pretty much it, right? There's not a whole lot more else you can do. Maybe a good wheel route here and there, but with passing... It's similar to blitzing. There's only so many things that you can do. And so what the best man players have figured out to do, and what I've tried to be able to figure out how to do, and what I hope my channel helps both me and you guys figure out how to do, is how do you package those couple key things together, and then how do you execute them at a high level? Because, again, it all comes down to execution. It all comes down to execution. My job, your job, as we play this game is to be able to execute, to be able to give get stops on defense, score points on offense, not give up big plays on special teams, and make big plays on special teams. That's it, <laughs> right? The three or four functions of the game. So, you know, that's kind of the dynamic that I hope that you're kind of hearing through this video is what I'm going to try to do with my channel is I'm going to try to help you and myself do that, help us do it together and in a way that's not going to take up a lot of your time. Meaning a lot of people will put, and I, and I will do that, I'll put tips out there, play breakdowns, all those things. But where I think you're really going to benefit, where I think I'm going to really benefit, is from the tangible, okay, we're in a game, head-to-head -head mode, what do you do? How do you run? How do you, you know, what are, what are your adjustments? What are the things that you're going to focus on? What, what are those next steps right what are those next steps so like here i'm gonna blitz seven at him because he's in going heavy panther right i don't have to defend much i got a couple corner routes i gotta get you know and maybe some streaks but see there i've got him and we just wrap up but he's got nothing that can beat me deep so i don't have to have anybody deep being able to adjust the defense being able to adjust to the formation being able to, to 
force your opponent to throw where you want him to throw. That's something that I don't think very many people talk about. Those are the little things that make you very, very effective on defense. So right here, because of the down and distance, we're going to blitz crib. Oh, I knew he was going there. I thought I had it. Dang it. I got a little held up on the tight end. But again, knowing your ins and outs of your scheme. When I blitz seven, I'm expecting he's going to have to throw the ball in under one second. So now what I'm going to do is kind of follow that up with a with a max simple 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 pressure they were able to catch him because we hadn't sent that pressure at pressure at him too much get the sack get the fumble now again offensively and i'm just showing you the offense just because but you would then at this point go into a little bit more of a ball control offense because you're trying to get up by two possessions trying to take some timeouts situational madden that's how you win games clock management red zone Simplify. Those are the little things. And those are the things that I'm.